question number one of your pre-lab and question number two of your pre-lab is actually very similar to this question so I think once we work out this first question then question number two will be a lot easier for you to do on your own um, so what this question says and I apologize for the quality of this, this is the best I can get um, and at about eight minutes seven minutes the bell is going to ring for the next class period so if this is still going you're going to hear that bell and just I apologize in advance um, part one of this laboratory, we have 25 mils of a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid. This is the main ingredient in vinegar, if you for some reason didn't know that. Um, and then there's the formula. Is titrated with 0.1 molar of sodium hydroxide. And then they're nice enough to give us the Ka of acetic acid, which if you've been in this class long enough, you've probably got it memorized, and that is a 5. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So the question's asking us to calculate the pH of the equivalence point. Well, you might be going, okay, well, what's an equivalence point? Well, the equivalence point is the point in the reaction between the acetic acid and the sodium hydroxide. where the reaction has gone to completion and you've added just the right amount of sodium hydroxide to completely neutralize all of these little acidic hydrogens here. And so what you end up with is sodium ions, acetate ions, and water. And at the equivalence point, this reaction has gone completely to products. There are no reactants left. And so what we can do from here is we can use this information to calculate the pH. And you're probably looking at this going, well, wait a minute, there's no hydrogen ions in here. So how can I calculate pH if there's no hydrogen ions? Well, you're right, there's no hydrogen ions. And if you look at the ions that we do have, you'll see that we have the sodium ion, which is coming from a strong base and the cation from a strong base is a neutral ion. So this will not contribute to the pH. And then of course water, water it doesn't contribute to pH either so the only thing that we have is the conjugate base of our weak acid and so what's going to happen at this point is you're going to have a second reaction start taking place and you'll have that acetate ion reacting with the water in an equilibrium situation where you produce acetic acid again and hydroxide ion and now looking at this you're still going well I don't have anything that measures pH over here but hopefully you do and you recognize this over here and while we can't calculate pH from this we can find pOH and if you remember from some of the earlier lectures if you take 14 minus the pOH then you get the pH H. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this reaction to figure out the pOH and then convert it into pH. So this is how you do it. Coming back up to this reaction up here, I'm going to switch colors one more time. Um, we had 25 mils of 0.1 molar solution. So I'm going to say 0 0.025 liters of 0.1 molar solution. And here we also have a 0.1 molar solution. What we don't have immediate information on is what volume of sodium hydroxide we used. Well, let's look at a couple of things here. Acetic acid is a monoprotic acid. That means it only has one acidic hydrogen. And sodium hydroxide is a monobasic base. And what that means is these guys are going to react in a one-to-one -one ratio. And so since their concentrations are the same, then that means that the volumes necessary to, to you or the volumes necessary to of the sodium hydroxide to neutralize the acetic acid are also going to be the same. <clears throat> and since this reaction went to completion, we know that however many moles we had of the acetic acid have now become the acetate ion. So if you multiply these two guys together, you can actually get the number of moles. And so this works out to 0 0.0025 moles. And you know what, you guys probably want to see that calculation, so I'll just do that down here. If you have 0.025 liters of a solution, 
and it has a molarity of, for every one liter, you have 0.1 moles. Well, the liters cancel out. You multiply these two together and you end up with 0 0.0025 moles, which is the situation that we have up here. I'm gonna get that out of the way because I'm not gonna have room for that in a second. So, if we have 0 0.0025 moles of the acetic acid, once it's all done and reacted, we now have 0 0.0025 moles of the acetate ion. So what? Well, if you look here, we have an equilibrium reaction, and since we want to find the concentration, the equilibrium concentration of the hydroxide ion, we can do a rice. And we need the number of moles of the acetate to figure out our starting concentration of the acetate ion. And whatever goes in rice tables, remember it has to be a concentration, and so we can't put 0 0.0025 moles, we have to get this into moles per liter. Well, so what volume are we working with now? Well, we had 25 milliliters of acetic acid and 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So now our total volume is 50 milliliters or 0.05 liters. And you solve this, work it out, and you end up with a concentration of 0 0.05 molar. Now, water's a liquid, so it doesn't participate in the equilibrium expression. The acetic acid in the beginning, there's that bell I was telling you about. The acetic acid in the beginning is zero and the hydroxide ion in the beginning is zero. <coughs> and then we will go through some change where the acetate ion amount decreases, the acetic acid amount increases, and the hydroxide ion amount increases. And they're all individual X's because it's a one to one to one mole ratio. So what that means is that at equilibrium, the acetate ion concentration is going to be 0 0.05 minus x. The acetic acid concentration, 0 plus x, or just x. And the hydroxide ion concentration, same thing, is just 0 plus x, or just x. So from here what we can do is we can set this into an equilibrium expression and say that Kb, because this is a base, this is the conjugate base of acetic acid, Kb is going to be equal to the products, which in this case is the acetic acid, times that hydroxide ion, divided by the acetate ion. Now there's another little bit of information that we know about Kb from here. Uh, and that is, we know Ka of acetic acid, and we know from definition that Kw, the equilibrium dissociation constant of water, is equal to Ka times Kb. And so to isolate this for Kb, we know that Kb is going to be equal to Kw over that Ka that they gave us up here at the top. And if you're forgetting, Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. This is just a constant. So now we can plug in numbers and do a calculation. So I know for here, my concentration of my acetate, or my, I'm sorry, my acetic acid is going to be x. And I'm going to multiply that by my concentration of my hydroxide, which is also x. And so this ends up being x squared. Divide that by my concentration of acetate. Well, that's 0 0.05 minus x. Well, if you remember, most of the time this change is going to be really, really small. And so we can make an assumption that x is so small that once x has been removed from 0 0.05, that it's not going to significantly change it, or it's not going to change it enough that we need to worry about it. Maybe it changes it to 0.0499996 you know, something like that. And so what we can do is just assume that x is really small and ignore it, say that x is negligible. And so instead of putting 0 0.05 minus x and having to deal with the quadratic formula, we're just gonna put 0 0.05. And that's gonna be equal to kw over ka. Well, kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And ka, they gave us up here, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So we need to solve this little guy 
right here. And in solving for x, we will have our hydroxide ion concentration, which we can then plug into pOH and find pH. So we're going to work out, solve for x. I actually don't have any of this worked out yet, so y'all get to plug into your calculators right along with me. So the first thing I'm going to solve is this guy. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. This works out to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And there's the tardy bell. There will be one more bell at 305 right here. So again, I apologize for that one. And that's going to be equal to x squared over 0 0.05. Well, now I'm just going to multiply these two guys together. And so I really need some more space. Here, I'm going to switch colors so you all can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to purple. I'm going to move right up here. And so x squared is going to be equal to 2.8 times 10 to the negative 11 which makes x, just square root both sides, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 11, gives me 5.3 times 10 to the negative 6. And remember, x is our hydroxide ion concentration. And so now that we have the hydroxide ion concentration, we can take the negative log of x and that gives us pOH. And so the negative log of 5.3 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to 5.28. And maybe you're wondering, hey, wait a minute, you've been doing two sig figs this whole time, and now all of a sudden you have three. Well, if you remember, whenever you're converting from a numerical value, in this case a scientific notation, into a pH, this 5 right here, this value, comes from the exponent. And then these two digits come from this value right here. And so however many sig figs that you have right here tell you how many sig figs you're allowed to have after the decimal. And so instead of this being 5.3, this actually is supposed to be 5.28. But getting back to the question, the question didn't ask us for pOH, which is 5.28. It asked us for pH. And the pH of the solution is going to be 14 minus 5.28, or 8.72. So pH of this particular solution at the equivalence point is 8.72. Now there's a second part to this question. Whoopsie daisy. And the second part to this uh, question, here let me erase what I've got here, just to make some room for the second part. Whoopsie daisy, don't want to erase all that. Is, based on this table right here and the pH that we calculated right here, what is the appropriate indicator to use for this reaction. And so we're going to look at this 8.72. I'm going to go, I need to find a, an indicator that changes around 8.72. So 8.72 is partly between 8 and 9, about right here. So I'm just going to draw a line. And the only indicator whose color change range is in this line is phenolphthalein. And so the indicator that I would use for this particular reaction would be phenolphthalein. And hopefully this helps you figure out the pre-lab question for number one, and hopefully it helps you figure out the pre-lab question for number two. And I will see you guys later. Have a great afternoon.